In this video, you're gonna see how a village cooks up an entire yak in Pakistan. He's gonna take off the lid and we unveil the most magnificent pot of yak and rice I have ever seen in my life. But first, let's back up. This is Pakistan's isolated northern Hunza region. Last time, I learned about their traditional food this is very good. and lifestyles shaped by life in the mountains. This can is roaring hot at this point. Hunza people like hot because in Hunza very cold. Only some animals can survive this harsh terrain and the extreme weather of Hunza. I came from the mud. Enter the yak, a domesticated wild ox that thrives in cold, used for its fur, milk, and meat. This looks incredible. What is that, a hip? Yeah. When I need a hip replacement surgery? Let me know, I will send it to you. Thank you. <laughs> Here, it's consumed on rare and special occasions, an occasion like today. Joining me today, Cher. He spent his life among this mountain range of the Hunza Valley. Right now, we're on our way up the mountain to meet a yak dealer who spent the night coming down to meet us halfway. Gentlemen, good morning. Right now, there is a yak about 15 feet behind me. What does a yak do before it attacks you? It will make some sound with his nose. It's eating grass. We're good for a little bit. I'm very excited. I have traveled to many countries. I've tried many different types of animals. This will be my first time trying yak meat. Just seeing it up close for the first time in my life right now, it's incredible and it inspires a little bit of fear because at any moment it could come charging this way and then we're done for or else I have to jump off the mountain. How much does this yak weigh? 250 kgs, yeah. That's it? Oh, I thought it was a lot more than that. They say time heals all Yaks live at the highest altitude of any animal. Compared to an ox, the yak has humped shoulders, large horns, heavy skin, and long shaggy hair that insulates it from extreme cold. When they are full with their stomach, they sit on the snow anywhere. And when the water gets freeze, they eat the snow. That's the way of surviving. Yaks are badass. They don't tolerate the cold. They're built for it. It's about 50 degrees here, but even this temperature is way too hot for the yak. What temperature do they like? Minus temperature. Just under freezing. Yeah. These particular harsh conditions make the difficult job of yak herding, well, not for everyone. Kareem here, well, he's been doing it for over 30 years. You've brought this yak up since 3 a.m. Yeah. How hard is it to travel with a yak? We catch him from the top of Horn Pass. It's around 4,100 meters from sea level. It's a really tough job. Sometimes it's attacking also. Yaks are slaughtered between the ages of three and six. When it's time, they can weigh over 2,000 pounds. What you guys are about to see and what's gonna happen today is nothing new for this community. Everyone's gonna be here, women, children, kids, and all of them are gonna see from beginning to end the entire process, from slaughtering to the final meal. This is a really special experience because you have to travel so far to this isolated region, not only in the world, but it's isolated within Pakistan. Any moment that yak is gonna pull up and we're gonna see what happens from there. Majestic, broad, and powerful as he is, the yak is not invincible to experienced hands. Like many times before, the familiar villagers work in harmony to begin the butchering process. Skinning, removing organs, all will be used, all except the blood, as we are still in a Muslim community in the Muslim country of Pakistan. Why are people eating yak and not just beef from a cow? As uh, we are living in mountains, we have this opportunity to keep this kind of animals. And the yak meat is better compared to another beef like buffalo or cow because the yaks eat the natural herbs in the mountains. So the yak meat is uh, more softer and more delicious. With several dishes ahead, each portion, each cut of meat is sliced and diced with the final destination in mind. Our dinner of yak meat is more than half a day and many hours of work away. In the meantime, breakfast. An omelet cooked with onions and tomatoes. 
paratha made from wheat dough. Twist it up to give it a signature flaky texture, flatten and toss it on the flat top. Any hearty breakfast must also be joined by a powerful, life-giving beverage. Mostly here in mountain areas, we have the salty tea. We use the salt in tea. Um, I feel like it's too much. This is the pink Himalayan salt. You just need to stir it. Oh, really? Yeah. Across from me, Zareen Baik, Hunzakut, and local teacher. A little bit of a no, dim, and then do I take a little bite? No. <laughs> no. You just sip that tea. Oh, that's salty. Yeah. Interesting. If you want this here, you can put some butter in it. And you can take a piece of this fitting. This no, is a no, thick no. bread. I like that your tea is also a meal. Let's try it out. Mmm, that's delicious. There's some nice richness from the butter, and the bread's just really soft, saturated, soaking up all that salty tea. I like it. This is our tradition. traditional way of sharing food. Ooh, that was awesome. And then I use this to pick up the egg? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. a bigger tongue cry there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's delicious. A little veggie omelet, nice soft weedy bread. It's like a little breakfast burrito. Burritos. It's one of the best things out there. So I noticed breakfast would usually be no meat, but if you're eating meat, when would it be? Dinner and lunch. Is it common for the people in the village to eat yak? Yeah, they do. Especially in winters, we mostly eat the yak meat. Because beef has got this property that it keeps here warmer whole day long and winters are really harsh in here. So they dry up the meat and they keep it for months and they cut the beef from there and they just cook it. This is our head chef, Haman Karim. This plot of land is his and it'll serve as the perfect outdoor kitchen as cooking stations pop up throughout the day. Reinforcements are headed here from the base of the mountain, but for now, we've got work to do. Today's yak, hundreds of pounds of meat will be cooked five different ways. First up, the boil. This is supra. It requires one back leg simmering for three hours along with onion, ginger, garlic, and salt. Cooking is underway. We have our whole outside area set up here. There's about 10 or 12 people working together to make this big feast happen. We have to have all this done in two and a half hours. This is extreme cooking. So take a look at this. He's already been boiling this for almost a couple hours now. Yeah. Okay, look at that. You can see the limb is starting to render down. It's gonna get really cooked, get really soft. This is one of the main things they eat here. And they can also use the juice itself to make rice. So that's something they plan on doing soon. They also have super loud tractors like that one. Gotta love the guy way out in the countryside with a COVID mask around his chin. Safety. So that's just one of our dishes. Back here, we also have a dish with meat and potatoes. This is aloo gosht, a type of meat curry. Add the ribs to the pot. Then, chopped onion, the garlic, ginger, salt mixture, and curry powder. Then cook it for an hour and a half. What I love is that when he's cooking, he doesn't have some metal spoon or a little spatula. He has this. Can I hold this for one second? It's a piece of rebar. This is what you put in concrete to make it stronger when you pour concrete. And they've had a blacksmith flatten out the tip right here so he can use it to cook huge portions of food. How cool is that? Right now, he is gonna put in the potato. Oh, he just puts in a little bit at first. You don't wanna overdo it, intimidate it, overwhelm it, like me to girls when I was in high school. The fire is doing its job. The meat is stewing, the curry cooks low and slow. And if you're in the right place at the right time, you'll find little morsels that are already ready to munch on. Right now, we have some barbecue, though it is not the typical Hunza food, but yeah. it is Pakistani. This is yak kebab. The chef uses meat from the backbone, then marinate with ginger garlic juice, red chili powder, salt, lemon juice, garlic powder, vinegar, and cooking oil. Skewer the meat and grill it over charcoal. It's gonna be my first bite ever of yak. Let's go. It's interesting, it has a lot of seasoning on it. The masala, it's a bit spicy and very powerful. So it's hard to taste what the animal tastes like. It feels a little bit beefy. It is beef. That's beef. We count it as a beef, but it is softer than the other beef. Absolutely, it's so tender, it's delicious. I mean, it's been grilled, so there's little crunchy bits on the yeah. edges, but still inside, not dry at all. Other thing I want to add in this, the high blood pressure, patients cannot eat the beef because it got high cholesterol, but the same patient can eat yak meat. There's a lot of people with high blood pressure that watching my show. Okay. So it's a revelation. That's great yeah, news. This is a favorite all over Central Asia. 
The ways of referring to the dish and what you put in it depends on where you are precisely. It's the centerpiece for many important communal events. Palau. A rich, fragrant rice-based dish loaded with plenty of protein. Hits the pot with onion, carrots, cumin, cumin leaves, tomato, palau spices, chicken powder, coconut flesh, almonds, raisins, and sugar. Look at that, it is magnificent. Beautiful, bubbling meat. You can just smell the spices coming through in the steam. I've already had a little bit of a taste, but I think here is where I'm gonna really experience big, succulent, soft cut of yak meat. This is my dream scenario. Remember the Supra from earlier? They add that potent Supra stock to this Palau pot. Those deep, fatty yak flavors will now soak into the basmati rice. See, this isn't the kind of food show where we pretend everything's gonna go great and then we smile and eat at the end and we say, oh, what a happy ending. No, we were in Lahore. We had a chef, he tried to cook a whole goat underground. We waited three hours, pulled it out. That looks like half an inch, roughly, is probably cooked. And then under that, pretty raw. Something similar with us here. No, nothing similar, please. No, no I mean, the food we take three hours. Oh. But this will be done properly, and you will enjoy it. All right, right here we have another appetizer, something we can try out before the main feast that's gonna be taking place in a couple of hours. With all the different animals I've eaten through my different travels, I've noticed they all have a little bit different feeling with their organs. For example, I had camel recently in Egypt, and that was a trip. Like, the heart tasted like liver. The liver tasted weird and snappy and spongy. Oh, wow, delicious. So I'm gonna see here if the yak liver and the yak heart have their own unique properties, flavors, and textures. Chop them up into bite-sized pieces. Marinate with salt, ginger, garlic juice, lemon juice, and tikka, a type of barbecue spice. Then, simply deep fry. All right, I want to share something with my man right here. And that's liver, yes? Cheers. Mm. I like this prep because it's fried. Mm. Oh, man. That's some of the best liver I've ever had. This knocks the socks off of regular beef liver from a freaking cow. Oftentimes, beef liver, sometimes it gets overcooked. It dries out your mouth when you eat it. This is great. Crunchy on the outside. When you look at the inside, it looks like it would be dry, but it's not. Mm. It's not even livery. If we're talking organs, my favorite organ, it's not the liver. It's not the lungs. It's not the penis. Why was that third on my list? <laughs> it's... The heart. I like it because it's so dense. I'm gonna rip this in half. I'm curious what this looks like. Oh yeah, see? Just super dense, beautiful meat. Wow, super moist, soft, tender, super juicy. Seriously, best animal heart I've ever had in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, it is just a couple hours before sundown. People are arriving, villagers are hungry and excited. We are gonna unveil the Palau right now. He takes off these two cement blocks here, embers, still really flipping hot, on top to help cook it from the top and the bottom. He's gonna take off the lid and we unveil the most magnificent pot of yak and rice I have ever seen in my life. Would you take a look at this? The aromas is really good. Oh my gosh. This is that beautiful basmati rice. It's long grains, vegetables, tons of meat all mixed together. This looks incredible. I can't believe what they've come up with here. Well done. These are our two main chefs for today. They have been busting their behinds to get this all done in time and we've done it. So from here, they're gonna serve it up, put it on some platters and some plates, bring it over to a carpet where everyone can sit together. We're gonna eat and have a good time. Let's do this. A feast is nothing without its community. Some finish off cooking. Some start assembling plates and delivering food while others sit patiently. Waiting for the socially acceptable moment to dig in. Across from me, local Pakistani and my good friend, Ali. Gentlemen, we've done it. Yes, there may have been uh, small disappointments, obstacles to be overcome during this trip. I can't remember any of them, maybe the goat, I guess. Just a stubborn goat. It was a stubborn goat. But today, my friend, I see a lot of yak meat all the way cooked through five different courses today. This looks incredible.
This is the pilaf. Over here, we have the alu gosh, plenty of yak meat, super soft and tender with potatoes. And then this is where I need clarification because this is the supra. This soup is not looking that soupy to me. It is very super, you can see. Actually, we mostly eat as a dry. Please grab a chunk of meat. For me, it's a very special moment. This is my first piece of yak ever. Oh, that's so awesome, dude. Cheers. Cheers <laughs> to yak. Mmm. I think this is even softer than beef. Yeah, it's so soft, you don't have to cut it. You can peel it off the bone, which is incredible. Beyond that, you can feel some of the fat has boiled out because it went into the water, and of course, you use that water to make this rice. But it still has plenty of flavor. If there's one dish which can be called the national food of Pakistan, it's alu gosht. Oh, is that right? Like This is one food which you get in every province, almost in every city, and people love it. The meat changes from one place to another. So for example, to Punjab, they're probably using goat meat or chicken for that matter. Well, here, yak is the local animal. So we use yak meat. What is so loved about alu gosht? Once you try it for yourself, you'll see that the combination is so perfect. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's so good. It's been braising for hours. So the meat is so soft, the intermuscular fat has just been rendering down all the connective tissues and tendons has been kind of melting down. The real way to eat alu gosht is with roti. Take some potato and meat, some curries, then have it. Epic bite. Make sure to take the bones out. Okay, good idea. Mm -hmm. To me, it doesn't even taste like a curry. I mean, it doesn't have that big multitude of curry type spices. It's just more like a delicious yak gravy or reduction. Potatoes are cooked perfectly, little parm, a little bit soft, but the yak is incredible. It is like the best version of beef, in my opinion. Wagyu beef. <laughs> yeah, but, well, not quite. Have you had wagyu? No. I <laughs> know. <laughs> Finally, we have this food right here. This is the palau. Here's what I was wondering. In Uzbekistan, they eat something called palau, but it must have a similar root because there's rice, there's meat, they're cooked together. Yes, so back in the days when the traders through Silk Road used to come to these areas, they just not used to trade goods. Also cultures and customs and words and languages and food. So I'm sure palau came to this region from Central Asia. And then they obviously improvised it. Look at this. There's still big pieces of meat in there too. Mm-hmm. And then some of that rice. Mm. Oh, that's so satisfying. I taste the cumin, the super savory red chili powder. The rice is so perfectly seasoned. It's separated from each other grain. The mouthfeel is so good. And I'm sure the soup from this supra is adding tons of flavor to this pilau. I think that's what it is. It really has a depth of flavor that's hard to put into words. That yak stock, the yak attack coming from over here is transferred into the rice and it's just absorbed wonderfully. Ooh, that is good. What do you think? Yes? Yes. I knew nothing about Pakistan when I started this trip. I knew other people had traveled here. I saw some videos here and there of what people were doing. I knew it used to be part of Hindustan, and so there were some connections between Pakistan and India, and that was my only reference. We started in Lahore, and I got those same vibes in the past. Very bustling, busy city, tuk-tuks, horses coming through the streets sometimes, street food, noise, just very vibrant. But then here, this place is like no place I've ever been before. It's interesting, because in some ways, it feels completely separated from what I know as Pakistan, but at the same time, it's just another part or another facet of this country. Yeah, for sure, like Gilgit, Baltistan, Hunza, this region is called Jewel of Pakistan. I believe it's the best that we have in terms of the beauty. Look at the landscape. Yeah. And the people, they're so simple, hospitable. So this place indeed has best of everything. I love it as long as I've been doing this show, 500 episodes, thousands of different foods, I still can be surprised. There's still different pockets and corners of the world that I've yet to see that are still blowing my mind, and this is absolutely one of them. Hello. Gentlemen, thank you so much. This has been quite an experience. We have plenty more food to dig into. Cheers to Pakistan. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. This is fantastic. I'm yeah. very excited. Oh, God, it's gotten really close, close to me. Actually, it's making friendship with us, I think. Oh, oh. <laughs> the problem with the main dishes is that they take three to four hours each. It's a long time. How's my performance? Really good? Is it inhibited by the smoke at all? It seems like not good. Very awesome. You can just smell the spices coming through in the steam. It is like, it's like a spice sauna. I just say that every time. What else steams? It's very steamy. If more of you guys watch my videos, I can hire a writer. How about that? Do you believe that being around a bunch of salt is like super healthy for you? I've heard the stuff like salt is used in ways to negate or to omit the bad energy. So. 
Well, it's not omitting me, so I don't think it's, I don't think it's working. <laughs> you want to go easy. Take your time. Put in a little potato. Mix it up. Put in a little more potato. Oh, I think he put it in because of me. Oops, that was not my intention. <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm dictating the recipe now on accident. Guys, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. We've done it. Five videos here in Pakistan. It is the end of this trip, but not the end of, you know, all the trips. My point is we're going to come back. Thank you so much for inviting us and for being such a wonderful ambassador to this country. Thank you so much for coming. I owe it to you on behalf of every Pakistani. I'm sure your content will show the world the true and real face of Pakistan. Thank you so much. Are we holding hands at this point? When does Not it become, forever. you know, when does it stop being a handshake and start? I'm just getting sentimental that you're leaving. No, it's emotional. Oh, are you crying behind I'm your prescription the, sunglasses? I'm hiding, I'm hiding my tears. Okay, good. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A piece, the final piece from Pakistan. Pakistan. All right, let's go. Let's go get some buttar. Buttar and mutton. I'm sh yuck. Oh, I like how you say yak. It's like yolk. How do you say? Yak. Now you've changed it. <laughs> Ha <laughs>